Greetings and salutations! Thank you for clicking on this video. This is an update video. We're going to look at what Linux Mint Debian Edition is like running on hardware. I woke up in the middle of the night last night after posting that video yesterday about Linux Mint Debian Edition that I was showing off in a virtual machine. Couldn't go back to sleep, man, and I thought, well, what am I going to do? I said, hey, I'm going to take a perfectly good computer system, which is running very nicely on the current operating system, blow that out, and put a different operating system on it, which may or may not work, just to see what happens. I do crazy stuff like that. So I did, and this is what I came up with. And we are running LMDE, 2 Betsy, and it's Cinnamon version 3.06. This is actually a different kernel than I showed you in the virtual machine, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. This is an updated kernel, so there is a way to get at least a partial update on the kernel or a more secure one. And the machine has 3.7 gigabytes of memory, and blah, 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 blah. So there you go. It looks a, just a little bit different than it did when it was running on Linux Mint 17.3, and we'll talk about why as we roll along with the video. So the way I chose to do this was to retain the home partition which is separated on the drive and then just install Linux Mint Debian over top of Linux Mint 17.3 in the root partition. And so that way I didn't have to reload all of the data on the machine and that worked out pretty good. There's a couple of little things that are a little bit strange so this is what we came up with now the CPU usage that you see there is because we are capturing video but this is a very peppy very fast operating system and it is very stable I think this is the most stable I've ever seen the cinnamon desktop since I've been using it which is last night and today and I haven't had any issues with it at all it doesn't slow down it doesn't bog down icons haven't disappeared off the desktop that sort of thing so yeah so far so good as far as all of that is concerned so let me go ahead and minimize this terminal I got a little list of things to go through here I thought you guys would be interested in first of all let's talk about the software I'm using to record this video I've been using this as an example of a piece of software that's not available for every distribution in the last two or three videos I've posted now to install it here all I did was go get the app image and I created a folder in my home folder called SSR and that's where the app image is living and it created an icon in the menu and then I was able to put that over here in favorites so I can get to it very easy using the same cinnamon menu. I also downloaded LibreOffice 5 and an app image and tried to do the same thing with that and that one was a little bit more tricky first of all it didn't create any icons by default and then it uh, I couldn't figure out how to associate files with it so what I ended up doing to get that to work was well I got it to partially work let's put it that way because I ended up doing something different in the end so if we run this command right here cinnamon menu editor you will get this little editor right here and what it will allow you to do is to create a launcher in any one of these categories you want to so if you download an app image and it doesn't create the icon for you you can just do it manually and so I did that and put it in office but the only problem was is that it didn't show up on anybody else's user account so what you have to do is open this on every user account then you can create an icon you can browse to the app image and it'll work kinda sorta because it doesn't get an icon from the LibreOffice app image and then the other problem that I ran into was there's no file association because the system it really basically doesn't know it's there so if you want to open up a document let's say just by clicking on it in the home folder or your documents folder it won't work you know, there may be a way to do that you could manually associate everything with the app image big pain in the butt so I ended up going ahead and getting rid of that LibreOffice app image and what I did to get LibreOffice 5 on the machine I'll show you that in just a second 
because as you may recall, Debian ships with LibreOffice 4.3, or at least Linux Mint Debian does. I don't know what they're actually doing in Jesse at this point. So what I did was, is I jumped over to the LibreOffice site and I found that they do have deb packages that you can download. The deb packages are supposed to work for Ubuntu and Debian, and they certainly did in this case. So if we take a look here, it comes as a tar GZ file. And taking a little while for it to read that file. You'll see here that we have a couple of things. First of all, we have the readmes and you can open this up and then you will get instructions on how to actually install this because it's not one deb file it's the entire LibreOffice suite in a bunch of deb files so that's how they do that I've never installed LibreOffice this way before and even though 5.1 is out or the later version I, I took the version that was one back just for stability stake and I've been using 5.0 for a long time on all of my other computers so everything syncs up nicely here so you have all these deb files that are in here and you extract this folder and then you open it up in a terminal and you jump into that folder and then you just use uh, dpkg to install them that's how you do it that's how they say to do it worked out fine so if we jump over here to the menu and take a look under office you will see that we have the entire LibreOffice suite and this is what it looks like so it's LibreOffice. You guys have seen it before. <laughs> no big deal. Let's see what else is there to talk about as far as software is concerned. Spotify was very easy to install because it, it's actually in the repositories. You just go and download the client. You will have to go ahead and update the system again because it's a rather old client that's in there. But to get the latest, that'll get it on the next updates. As far as Skype was concerned, they said that there was an app image of Skype. But when I actually went to look for it, it wasn't there. So I just went to the Microsoft site and downloaded the Debian package for that. The one that they have up there is for Debian 7, but it works. It installed. The only downside to using that package is the fact that it has 108 dependencies and <laughs> installed all that stuff on the computer. Not a bunch of big dependencies, mind you, but just a lot of files to install to get one piece of software running. Um, another thing that happened when I did this was the themes didn't quite work out uh, for whatever reason so you may have noticed already that things look a little different and I will show you why this was set up with mint X themes originally and if we come over here and click on the different components of the desktop decorations here you'll see there is no mint X I have no mint X there there is no mint X there just the uh, Adweta, which is GNOME and high contrast, and that's it. So I had to change the uh, theme up a little bit and choose what was there. Of course, you can download whatever you want. I don't know whether I lost that during the upgrade process because, like I said, you when this first installs, you have a very old version of Cinnamon, and then it replaces it. So it may have wiped that out then, or it could have been something that had to do with me doing this in place where I had retained the home partition and it just doesn't see those new mint x things i don't know what it is that they're not there so that's something that will have to be addressed at some point or i could just leave it the way it is i kind of like the way this looks you know and um, other than i mean this works exactly the same way so it's no big deal you can just download whatever you want but it's worth mentioning in case you do this and things look really kind of different and let's talk a little bit about the update process because that's kind of like really important here. Um, and uh, before I move on to that, yes, I installed the latest virtual box. So that's running. And the only thing that's kind of strange about that, I don't know whether this is virtual box or whether it has something to do with the way this desktop is rendering applications. Uh, if I open it up here, you notice that the fonts are really small. So I don't know whether that's something that the VirtualBox folks did or what the deal is, but there you go. Okay, and uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, I was going to talk about updates. So when you first install the system, you have a, a pretty long up, update process to go through. I guess where that is is supposed to be simple screen recorder that 
yeah probably doesn't have the icon there because uh, it's running from an app image or something like that anyway let's open up updates so the first thing that you want to do is install all of the updates before you do anything else I told you about that yesterday when we were goofing around with the virtual machine and it will install three rounds of updates so as soon as you boot up the system the first update that it will install will be the mint update itself then it will get a whole bunch of packages and install them and then once they're installed it'll install another couple of packages so that will get you most of the way up to date what I ended up doing was to actually after that go ahead and do this from a terminal and yes it is the same command as Ubuntu because Ubuntu is based on Debian so those of you who are used to Ubuntu and Linux Mint are not going to have any problem using apt because it's exactly the same tool in here so just uh, run the updates from here and then the next command to put in after this gets through figuring out what it's doing would be sudo apt dist upgrade don't leave that extra space in there because it ain't gonna work so right now there's nothing that's up to date or needs updating but anyway I just showed you that to tell you that when you do that you get some packages that the update manager holds back and they come directly from Debian and it does update the kernel it doesn't change it from the 316 kernel but you do get an updated 316 kernel which I assume has more security features in it but I'm not a Debian expert so those are the basic things that you need to do and also you'll need to reset your mirrors if you've been using Linux Mint for a while then you can do that and um, that's it it works it runs it's uh, very stable the desktop is very clean and haven't had any problems with the machine slowing down bogging down it's running a little bit slow right now I think because I've opened up a lot of applications and I am capturing video while I do it on this particular computer that is pretty much par for the course no matter what operating system it's running on uh, when the high definition video capture is going on it does tend to slow it down just a little bit before we wrap up this video more wonderful Linux Mint news to pass along. It has something to do with Linux Mint here on freedompenguin.com. Uh, I have an article up about how to upgrade Linux Mint 18 that goes along with the video I posted here on YouTube a while back. So you can check that out at freedompenguin.com. Also, while you're at it, check out Easy Linux on the web. And yeah, it's the, the new website is rolling along fine. Haven't done anything major with it lately, but. I'm going to planning on poking at it somewhere down the road. You can check that out if you haven't seen it. Also, check out Facebook, uh, the Easy Linux page on Facebook, where everything that I come across that has anything to do with desktop Linux that I think you guys might be interested in gets posted. That's something you definitely want to be following for sure. And there you go. So anyway, thank you for watching the video. It is Linux Mint Debian Edition running on my daily driver was it worth all of the effort <laughs> i don't know we shall see i'm gonna let this roll for a while and see how it goes uh, it's very lightweight and very stable and if it's not capturing high definition video it's very zippy as well so that is definitely a plus it's not i mean we're not talking about a huge difference between this and linux mint 17.3 as far as performance is concerned it's not giant but I have noticed that it is just a little bit slicker and a little bit snappier so maybe that will make it worth the effort and of course uh, this puts me on the Linux Mint Debian edition release cycle when Linux Mint Debian 3 may come along in a year two three whenever Debian decides to move on to uh, Debian 9 I guess they'll come up with that so this machine is definitely good to go for a long time and won't need to be reinstalled so that's it, gang. Thank you for watching. We'll talk again soon.